So a 5-4 and 6-3 victories for LSU. And here comes Texas State and Ryan Farber. My goodness, has this freshman been fun to watch. We know what they did against Houston on Friday. Ninth inning homer to tie, tenth inning homer to win, and Farber goes after the breaking ball and down on strikes to begin the game. Patino strikes out to continue the game. Two up, two down, two Ks. Morris run the count full. And that missed in. Travinsky didn't handle it cleanly. Poked towards left. On comes Pearson. He won't get there. Takes it on a bounce. Mora has to hold it second. He took a turn, but Pearson plays it back in. So after a couple of strikeouts, Bobcats get a walk and a bloop single. Strikes were just underway. And the pitch to Pena poked towards the first baseman Jones. That's a nice backhand. Takes it to the pillow one assisted to strand a couple of Bobcats. A little bit about his team. That pitch is right down the middle for strike three call. Kling must have been sitting on something else. Took that fastball at 93 down the gut. Huge crowd at Rice on Wednesday. Pearson pokes one out in the left center field. That's dropping for a base hit. One out single. Brady Neal hits one right into the shift to the second baseman Mora. Back on the outfield grass. Neal's retired. The Tigers strand a runner. One scoreless inning in the books. Another fly ball right center. Cling back. Going to call off Brown and make the catch. So the Bobcats go in order in the second. Three infielders on the left side of the diamond. Doesn't matter as Travinsky takes strike three from Sam Hall. Gets a second strikeout. Been an issue. I mean, he's always hit. Question was uh, in first base replacing Trey Morgan. How would he respond in terms of the pitch com device? Again, that looks like an iPad on his wrist. Ground ball punched to the left side. Pal can't come up with it. Everybody's safe. Ground ball to the left side. Again, three infielders there. Powell perfectly placed. Still retire his counterpart, Braswell, and the Tigers strand a pair in the second. Always generous with his time is Jay Johnson and a great spokesperson for LSU. Ian Collier sends one towards the Crawford boxes. Just missed a home run. Now Pearson has a chance for an outfield assist. The throw to second base just a little bit offline. And Collier has to hustle in with the double, just missing a home run. They see in your potential, your stuff. Farber pokes one to left. Pearson over to make the grab. And that's a big first out because it keeps Collier at second at uh, second base. Just who digests this. Yep. The 2-2 is hooked on the ground softly to Jones. He'll take it himself, waving off Hurd. That is the second out as Collier goes to third base. Analytics guys can be so valuable. Chase Mora just hits bullets. This one, though, traveling to Kling, who will make the catch to end the inning. So a leadoff double for the Bobcats against Thatcher Hurd. You know, you started covering LSU when Jay took over as head coach. Paxton Kling is going to be oh, out at first base. Oh, that was a play by Powell. I thought for sure that was going to be an infield single or a base hit in the left, but Powell somehow got up and made that perfect throw to first base. Running club for one night, <laughs> take the night off where I go on a date or something, you know? Josh Pearson oh. lifts one high in the air, deep play right Pearson. center field. That ball's going to find the bullpen. And Playoff Tiger Pearson. Nation excited for the first run of the game on a Josh Pearson homer. Well, Pearson puts a charge into that one, and we've seen some balls flying out of here today. Brett, that one uh, makes it to the bullpen. Felt like he got enough backspin on this one, though, Pat, that sure uh, yeah, it was going to continue to care. A lot of carry on that ball. Yep, Tigers are happy. They'll collect that one. I'm sure he'll get the game ball for uh, at least the first home run of the day. <laughs> yeah, there was a warning given. I know there was a warning given to the LSU bench earlier. They were kind of chirping at some of the uh, Bobcats. Steps in the box. He had an amazing year last year. And of course, it kind of gets lost with the Skeens and Cruz combination. And he's going to get himself a base hit here as it drops in front of Farber. He's going to try for two, and he's going to be out. And uh, you got to play that guy deep. And he dropped one in in front of the outfielders, but out trying to stretch it to two. So is there a series of winning it all every single year? Um, ooh. Well, that liner kicked out of the glove of Mora, and Brady Neal's going to get himself, I would imagine, a base hit. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the key. They weren't very strong, though. You had to That's why right, you need lots of them. <laughs> Two-strike pitch to Ramirez. Waves and misses. Thatcher Hurd struck out the first two batters he faced. Hit the home run in the ninth to tie it. 
Yeah, I hate to forget the dramatic moments this weekend because there have been a few that have followed. Just to use those to dig post holes. There's a chopper to third. White, can they get two? There's one. Back to first, quickly turned. Jones kept his foot in the bag. How about that play at first base? Pat, you talked about him getting better. No, no, no doubt. Jared Jones has really improved defensively around college baseball, but do you guys work on that blowing the bubble before you actually hit the home run? <laughs> that is not part of our drills. We do not do that. We do not do that at all. So uh, I asked him in the, in the clubhouse, said, hey, what was the bubble thing? He goes, I was just trying to stay relaxed, and uh, that's about as relaxed as I see it um, in that moment. So he does. He does. The game's not too big for him. He's, uh, he's definitely, uh, he's definitely uh, beyond his years. So one second. Hey, we get C going. It's a base hit to left field by Jared Jones. Milam stops at third base. The facilities movements, it's also uh, to try to hang on to players. Brown lifts one out in the right center. It's going to drop. Milam will score. Jones never stopped. He's going to third. Brown to second base in safely with a hustle double. And the Tigers have a 2 nothing lead. You know, second time around the lineup usually proves to be an advantage for hitters. LSU starting to figure out Sam Hall. This job by Jake Brown. From the full line, needs a strike and doesn't get it. That is a four pitch walk. Paxton Kling is 0 for 2. Updating, he's 1 for 3, and he's going to knock it to cover the runs with a rope to left. Jones will score. Brown will score. The Tigers have doubled their lead. It's 4 0. Think about the tools this kid has. Maybe a potential high draft pick in Paxton Kling. And he had grounded out and struck out, and then he just hits a laser to left. Sinker ball type pitcher. You've got to really be patient. Ground ball to the right side. All he does is drive in runs. Braswell will turn third and score. LSU's made it a 5 0 lead. Got to simplify it, Pat. Put the ball in play. There was an open hole, and White just chopped one into right field. And takes ball four. So that one hurts. That'll bring up Travinsky. Bases loaded. Full count to Travinsky. Hard hit. Maybe a chance. To get a force at second, Powell's relay to first, not in time. Mora had to kind of surround that smash and couldn't quickly feed it to Powell. Otherwise, that DP might have ended the inning. Instead, LSU cashes in another run. A long pause before another 3-2 pitch. Here it comes. And that is high, and that's ball four. So Milam is going to reach twice this inning. Good pitch. Strike three, inning over. 11 men batting. Thatcher heard back out there and Aaron Lugo yesterday's hero singles into center so he had a rocket to center for an out earlier and this time gets the base hit here three two. Oh, he took oh, off he got a huge <laughs> running jump <laughs> yeah he did Collier will strike out but uh, that was a hop skip jump step 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 and there was still no movement ball and two strikes to farm pokes it to the left side Braswell can't get it the ball kicks away and it's going to provide a run so Lugo by swiping second base, able to score on that ball that was kicked by the LSU shortstop. Farber's going to run. Pearson chasing that ball into the corner. It's off the fence. For some reason, with two outs, Farber stopped. And he's going to get to third, but he's confused. Was there some type of obstruction, interference, or did he just simply forget how many outs there were? <laughs> but Farber pulled up. It worked. Chase Mora, a dribbler to short. Braswell has to hurry the throw, and he threw it away. And two runs are going to score. Just a dribbler to short, and Braswell's had a tough inning. Maybe in unusual fashion, and then all of a sudden the comeback is on. That hit him. And then you mix in a free base. LSU fans on their feet trying to get through this inning. He gets the wave and a miss from Pena. Got him to go fishing. Wave and a miss. Good pitch. Braswell walked and scored back in that big fourth inning. Dumps one down in the right. Falling fast. Base hit. Retrieved by Galloway and played back in. We're going to stay Washington State. Going to go independent next year in baseball. Wave and a miss by Kling. It's really unfortunate for Oregon State. Pearson will wave and miss. So McCafferty works around a bloop single in the fifth inning. Junior college player out of New Mexico, JC. He's just hit three rockets today. He is locked in. Two hits to show for his efforts. 
Off to a bit of a slow start. He's going to one hop one to Braswell. Should be two. Out at second. Back to first double play. So Little faces three. Works around the single. Two balls, two strikes. That one is shot fair down the line. Hits off the short fence. And ricochets out into left field. And Brady Neal will coast to second base with a double. And his second hit of the game. That ball hit in the air. Down the line and left. Towards the Crawford boxes. Hits off the base of the fence. A little bit of top spin there from Travinsky. He will chase on Neal. That's the seventh LSU run. Back-to-back -back doubles by the Tigers. Rips one to right. This ball's down. It's going to go all the way to the fence. Travinsky will score. Milam will stop at second base. That's three straight doubles, tacking on two more LSU runs. This is a great swing from Milam, and this one laced into right field. Tigers doing a good job of really staying back on these breaking balls, and now with two strikes, that's off the table. Wouldn't you know it, now he has to go cover. <laughs> has to field and flip, <laughs> and he gets the out. If he had to take another couple of steps, that would have been Murphy's Law right there. Speaking of passion and spirit, Bobcats need some of that. Get things going. Well, there you go. Collier singles to center to begin the seventh inning. Great job by Coleman to recover and catch it. Chase Moore skies one towards left field. This is a long run for Pearson. He gets there to make the play. Pearson will chop one towards third. This is a long run for Lugo. Throwing on the run, not quite fast enough. He did everything he could. But Pearson beats it. Lifting a ball high in the air, deep center field. Farber turning and running, now moving to his left, into a dive, and somehow he caught it. What a route by Farber. White can't believe it. I'm assuming when you're Nolan Ryan, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> you can go to whatever game you would like. 3-2. That's strike three. A little bit of a delayed call, but... Might have bought the strike for his pitcher there. May have. Lugo's hit the ball hard three times today. Hacking at the first pitch. That one's way up there. Into the rafters, out into shallow center, and the catch will be made. So oftentimes, and that ball hit through the shift. Out into right center for a base hit by Brady Neal, his third hit of the game. Hayden Travinsky will check his swing. That ball kicked away just a bit. The throw to second base might still be in time, and it is. Neal got a little bit daring and tried to advance. Travinsky off the end of his bat sends one down the line and left. It'll drop in and roll to the fence. Boy, LSU has had a few of those doubles off the hands, off the end of the bats, yeah. and just putting them in play and getting extra bases these weekends. Liner to right again off the bat of Milam. This will chase on Travinsky with the ninth LSU run. Milam never stopped. He might be out at second, but the throw is high, and he is safe. Bobcats threw behind Milam, and he just kept running. Big wave of the miss. So Jones will K for the second out of the inning. For a start, get him a couple of the mats. Larson will shoot one into center for a base hit, so he's going to get a single and RBI. It's now a 10-3 LSU lead. So the pinch hitter drives in another LSU run. Ells, wave of the miss. A strikeout to end the eighth inning. And Coleman will issue the walk. So he's been pretty good through two innings, but he puts on a free base runner. 2-2 two -two pitch, cut on a missed. Two down on strikes, first out here in the ninth inning. Payoff pitch, poked out into left. Bingham, the new left fielder, into the game. That's a sliding grab. He wasn't sure if he was going to slide or dive, and he kind of went in between. And a four-pitch walk. Uh, he's choking it now. Yeah, he's not close. Yeah. Drill to center. Base hit by Ramirez. Going to chase home a couple of runs and make this a 10-5 game. And those runs go on the tally of Coleman. Two balls, two strikes. Ninth inning. That's a swing. I'll call it right here. Ball game over. <laughs> and the LSU Tigers win all three games this weekend. They defeat Texas State 10-5 on Sunday afternoon, now evening.